Good evening and welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. Last week, the Australian market hit its lowest level since November last year. So is now the time to sit on your hands and wait or get ready to buy more stocks? Tonight, we take a look at biotech and pharmaceutical stocks to see if there's anything in these areas that are worth buying. First up tonight, we'll share our hot stock tip for the week before diving into our view on the sectors in the Australian market. So sit back and relax tonight. We'll be jam-packed as we answer your emails, take your phone calls and give you the answers to some of the important questions around the stock market. Hello and welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. I'm Dale Gillam, your host for tonight. And joining me is Janine Cox, and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Well, thanks, Dale. And hello, everyone. Good to be with you all again. And I've had such fun this past week researching tonight's show. And our topic for tonight is all about the best biotech and pharma stocks to buy. Which stock will present the best opportunity? CSL, Fisher & Paykel. You'll have to wait and find out, but first, we need to get into this week's hot stock tip. Well, Janine, you know what a hot stock tip is? What is it? It's one of your favourite stocks. Actually, I think it, next to BHP, it's got to be your favourite stock. <laughs> it's the John's Ling Group. So let's go and have a look on the screen. And we, oh, we've put my pointer in the wrong spot. So it's a John, John's, I can never say this properly, John's, John's Ling, Ling Group. As you can see here, it's at $6.37 at the moment, slightly up today. Dividend yield, pretty low, 1.41%. So it's a bit more of a growth stock. PE ratio is really, really high at 35.59, but not doing too bad this year, up 13.14%. Not a bad stock at 1.76 billion. So it's not a low, low stock, but it's one of that growth sort of mid cappy area stocks. So the ones we like to look at for some good growth if it starts to move up and start what, the trend. What's interesting to me is mm -hmm. it's sitting in the ASX rank just outside the 200, it looks like. 198, it, it says sector rank. Well, no, so, oh, sorry, 205? the ASX rank, 205, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's outside that, could be outside the 200. We'd have to go and have a look. So you want everybody to buy it and knock it into the 200 <laughs> so there gets a lot of fun putting money into no. it and we I'm can ramp the stock. I'm saying just watch out because sometimes stocks that sit just outside of an index um, barrier, mm. like at 100 or 50 or 20, and eventually when they move into that, the big funds have to take a position in that. So sometimes that can push the price up. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so you said a lot, oh, but you didn't say too much. No, you That's said it. a lot. I mean, obviously, we've got some support and resistance on here. And if I just expand that up, you can see how it's find some support there at that line, which is what that $5.15 little, it closed above it through here. A little bit of indecision um, in through August. September took off. And so far, it's been holding up with the most of the markets been a little bit That's more true. bearish. Look, people will be looking mm. at that and they'll be thinking, why are her lines not right on the peaks or troughs there? And that's <laughs> top secret, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that, that is top secret. It is top secret. That's I mean, we... people go, well, what do you mean by how do we do it? And we do uh, do things a little bit differently anyway, don't we? You're so not let's supposed go to have... peek in there. Sorry? You're not supposed to look in there. Oh, okay. That's well, hidden. That's not for the show. Oh, it's not for this show? No. Oh, you got, who's that for? <laughs> Is, you're going to show and tell That's, me later? Yeah, I'll show you later. Show, or is this just for our <laughs> students, is it? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> moving right along to something that we can show people, this is a very, very common pattern at the moment, isn't it? Isn't a it? A lot of stocks doing this sort of triangle type of pattern. I mean, it's a massive one too. If we're going back there, back through to that high um, in April 2022, and obviously... We're sitting here right now in October 2023. I like but to do what you enjoy doing yeah. as well, which is looking at the angles of the trend moving up mm. and how it changes and then how later on when the stocks come back, they mm. come back to the angles of the, the trend. They, oh, they do. And at the moment, mm. I think this, instead of coming back to this bottom, I think it's going to go through here. And I think when it breaks through above this green line and we get a nice... I'd say a strong close above here and possibly a strong mm. close above this high there at 675. I like it. I think it's really nice. I think it's setting itself up like a lot of the stocks are, mm. and this is what we keep saying is whilst the newer news out there is probably a bit more bearish, mm -hmm. 
we're just so positive on our market well, at the moment. It's interesting because some stocks have actually held up so high and it's they good have. to watch it on days where the market's actually selling off and see what's holding up. Yes. And then on the days where the market's actually performing strongly and see what's being sold off. So, you know, keep your eye on the stocks that are actually holding up and are really defensive in those mm. changing, you know, on those changing days. And this one's doing that. And I, mm. yesterday on the Australian stock market report that I did for Talking Well, I went through every single one of the top 20 stocks to mm. show them what happened over the last few weeks and why our market is setting itself up for a nice mm. run. You know, right. and it's like, and it, it, it takes all that fear out of mm. it, doesn't it? It does it, when you break it down at that level. Mm, I think too and many people look at that it. micro view. I like this stock. I like what it's doing at the mm. moment. I think the pattern's perfect. I think people should be doing their analysis mm -hmm. on it at the moment yep. and getting ready to buy, but I do like it. But anything Excellent. else you want to say before we move on? No, that's you've done well. Well, that's it for our weekly hot stock tip. Now it's your opportunity to get involved in the show and have your questions answered. So tonight is the perfect night, as strangely, with very few emails, so you're guaranteed to chat to Dale and I. Remember, we don't bite, we prioritise phone callers, so call now on 0392909988. That's 0392909988. Or you can text your question on the, to the number on the screen right now. Now the first caller into the show right now gets a free copy of my book, Accelerate Your Well. So make sure you pick up your phone and dial 0392909988 and do it right now. Now why you do that tonight is the second Tuesday in the month, which means we take a look at the Australian market sector. So let's get into the charts, Janine. Okay, now on your screen right now is the Australian market sector's watch list, and I mm. know you've got a heap of cool stuff to say about this. Oh, look, for a start, it's yeah. on the week. This is the week as it was. A short week, but everything's up. Two days. Everything's up. This is what I wanted to show you. So look at that. I'm excited. That's good, isn't it? Utilities up 4%. Yeah. Let's see what's... Two days. Yep. I've just put it at the bottom. There it is at the top. Don't get dizzy. <laughs> um, you can see energy up there as well, 3.9%. Information technology, 2.55. That's a nice move for the week. All of these um, sectors that are moving up look really nice. But, Interesting that financial. But can I say it doesn't matter bottom. where they start, it's where they finish for the week that matters. Well, that's so true, but it's a good sign so far. So mm -hmm. let's have a look at what's happening for the month then, and that sort of changes a bit. We've got still some in the red materials, consumer discretionary, industrials and energy still slightly in the red. Mm -hmm. uh, energy being the worst one there, down 3%. We come up to the top and we've got utilities, which has outperformed. Communication mm. services up 1.35. Healthcare is up 1%. Information technology up 1%. So now compare that to what we're doing for the year and have a really good think about this. We're seeing a big difference so far. Healthcare mm. was up towards the top and then we've got healthcare down right We're going to look at, at that later on in the show. Lance. We are. That's that the big top, isn't it, tonight? So healthcare is down 8.5%. So mm. this is where the opportunities are at the bottom. And information technology is up 23.76%. That's come right back. That was over 30%. Mm. Yep. Consumer discretionary up 11.35%. Mm. It'll be interesting to see what happens in November when mm. people decide to go shopping. And communication services 6.8%. Utilities 4%. Industrials 3.35%. And energy 2.85%. Mm. Still energy's right in the middle there. We've seen some stocks get sold off recently. So... Mm. It'll be interesting to see whether energy picks up again. And financials, still the boring one at the moment, but that'll change. Yeah, look, I mean, both financials and materials still in the red for the year. Are we going to look at any charts? Yeah, I thought we'd have a quick look at materials because, mm. you know, there's a lot of doom and gloom there going on with um, BHP being sold off there over a yeah. couple of weeks and everyone, it was just all written up in the media. Mm. And then BHP came out with a whole lot Fortescue of... Fortescue slowed down a little bit, Fortescue Rio slowed, slowed down, down a little bit. They all slowed down, but, I mean, I, what do you think of that chart? How, how does that look to you? It just looks incredible to me. <sighs> look at this. Um, we can just draw our nice little pattern across there for BHP, and that looks awesome. So worst case scenario, it falls out of bed. We don't care. Mm. You know, we're not. We're not in it. We're just watching it and waiting for the best opportunity. And the best opportunity will come when we see it actually give us some positive um, direction and move up strongly. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm not even going to add anything to that. I think that looks good. You don't good. need to? Yep. I think you've said it all. And it's okay. probably said it better than I can. Okay. So what do right you reckon? Right out of the horse's mouth? I'm not a horse. Okay. Well, you're not a horse. No, I, hey, <laughs> you're trying to get me in trouble. Did you say nay or hey? You're definitely trying to get well, me in trouble. 
That is our, th that's our thoughts on the Australian market sectors. You, you're confused as I am. Now let's get into our first question. Now our first email is from Liam who says, Hi Dale and Janine, big fan of the show. Thanks Liam. Now I'd love to know your thoughts on uh, Aristocrat Leisure. He says, I don't own the stock, but it looks very interesting. I am a beginner investor and excited to learn from the Wealth Within team. P.S. Go Cats next year. Mm. Regards, Liam. I, I can't argue with that, can yeah, I? Yeah, you have to wait so long, don't you? It's very sad. Well, you know, mm. I've got to give other teams a go every now and again. You do. But can we answer his okay, question off, on cats. Aristocrat Leisure? All right. Um, Aristocrat Leisure, let's go and look at the chart now. You can see on the screen there, some time ago it actually broke out. Now my mouse has run away. You can see um, across here, and I'll just grab a horizontal line so it helps us get a visual on this. And now you we'll think this blue. would be doing really, really well because it's basically gaming machines and everything else, and it's an international company. Yeah, so but it's actually really struggled. Well. And, and we mm. actually thought it was going to pull right back. But normally in times of, let's say, doomishness, mm. gambling stocks normally do better or people gamble more. Yeah, that's true. Because they're mean, trying to make more money. Well, let's just go back and have a look at that sentiment. Mm. So if we look at what happened in prior to the GFC, it was actually a lot slower taking off. So the market turned in March, as you know. And that's May 2003. Yep. But this one actually turned in May 2003. So but it's like a lot that's later. That's way before the GFC. At that way point in time, the GFC, at that point in time, they didn't even have a CEO. But let's just have a yeah. look at how we we see everything moving. So um, 2,237.91. Mm. Now, when it bottomed, if we go here, this is March 2009. It actually mm. kept falling. I know, which is all really strange. You would have thought because we were, we went into recession then, mm. didn't we? Yeah. So normally it's a bit so of So the tsunami the hit and then that pushed everything down again. But, you know, so big gains, but mm. then it's just come back all the way and broken, you know, all of those support levels on the way. So, I like you know, it. where are we now? Um, are we in territory where it's going to come back again or are we in territory where it's more likely to move up? That's the question really right now. Mm, and I I'm, think not, I'm not sure at this point. You're not sure? Why not? Well, it looks good, but I'm just what? uncertain at the moment whether it's going to come back to test this line again because it's mm. just been sold off. Okay. So we've had one week down, it's turned around, it's trying to find support. So it may just roll over and hang around here for a while. That's all. So I'm you're thinking. just saying to Liam, just sit on your hands for a little bit, see which direction it goes. Well, there's no entry rule for a start. So he's, he'd have to wait and be patient. I'd want to see it get Isn't back Isn't that what above. I said? Like sit on your hands and be patient? Yeah, maybe we're just two alike now. It's just scary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking. Okay. Cool. All right. Next All right. Well, we do have a caller on the wow, line, Janine. That's exciting. So am I allowed to go to the call? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. I believe we've got a caller. Is it Jackie on the line? Hello. Have we got Jackie. a Jackie? Okay. Well, Jackie's dropped out. She didn't it's like a my question. joke. Do we know what it is? If we know what the question is, um, then no, we it was a least... general question, I believe. Oh, but what Jackie, a shame. if you're watching, Jackie, call back in again, and we'll we'll take your call. But we're happy to do that. Did you want to say anything else about? Um, well, look, um, you know, obviously we're, we're yeah. going to be moving on into the topic soon. And, yeah. But, you know, if, if Jackie calls in, we want to hopefully give her an opportunity. But if she calls in now, we, will we be able to speak to her? Yeah, of course we will be able to okay. speak to her because we would not speak to her, would we? No, I'd like to speak to her. Come I on, Jackie, call I know back. we love speaking, <laughs> especially ladies. Janine loves speaking mm. to the ladies anyway. So no. so we finished with Aristocrat Leisure. Yeah, I think yeah? so. Yeah? Okay, so now we need to move on to our topic, don't we? Well, now It sounds like I Jackie hasn't rung back. No, okay. We gave her an opportunity. Now, Dale, I have a quote. It's by scientist Brian Bethencourt, mm -hmm. who said, we're at the beginning of the digitization and automation of biotech. Now, my mind goes wild after hearing that. My mind's boggling at the thought of yours going <laughs> wild, Janine. <laughs> so how about we change that thought? I really don't want to think about that anymore, but I do want to talk about biotech and pharmaceutical stocks, Yeah, me too. Now, biotech was a buzzword in the stock market in the 90s. Now, do you recall that? Can you think back? <laughs> no, well, I hate to admit it, but yeah, I can really um, remember that. And I clearly remember that the carnage that also came with it as people speculated or you know, gambled in this area. It was huge. Yeah, now we've seen investors go crazy for these stocks. And when the market returns to growth once more, it will happen again. So for those who are more astute, there will be an opportunity to make hundreds or even thousands of percentage gains on some stocks. So the key in this area is to be patient, watch the opportunities and wait for the right time to buy in. Well, sounds like good advice to me. So 
we all understand what we're talking about in this area of the market, mostly to help people understand is we're talking about companies who make medicines mm. or vaccines. vaccines. Um, but in essence, they take two different approaches to it now. One is the mm. biotech companies, and they generally use living organisms, whereas the pharmaceutical companies develop products from chemicals. Yeah, yep. essentially. So you may be wondering just how much money goes into the research of medicines. It's amazing. Now, okay, so Investopedia indicates that the average R&D budget to get a medicine to market can cost nearly four billion US dollars and some exceed 10 billion. It just blows my mind. Well, that's seriously big business then, isn't it? I mean, I dare I say, it's also risky, so the stakes are very high, and I know many biotech and pharma companies, uh, they've gone broke in the whole process of doing this sort of stuff. That's right, and, and that's because this is a highly cyclical area, which means anyone contemplating putting your money into these companies must have good rules and solid research as a minimum. And I strongly suggest that if you do decide to buy, that you make sure that you know how you're going to sell before you put your money at risk. Well, that's really good advice, isn't it? Always it's know what you're doing before you put your money at risk. Simple but true, yeah. Well, it's profound, but I mean, you know, I was only chatting with M Matthew, who's the owner of Optima yesterday, mm. and I said, how many people, you know, do that sort of stuff? Mm. And he went, yeah, very few. Yep, um, exactly. But yeah, so heed the advice from Janine. Okay, Dale, that's good advice from you and me. We know both biotech and pharma companies require loads of capital investment to develop their medicines and in recent years, there have been periods where capital has been really tight. Okay, so the Australian government has also stated that it's committed to supporting a biotechnology sector that attracts global attention. Now, given this, when the next boom starts, we should see a lot more private money or public and private money pour into developing medicines. Now, Janine, I'm sure you know why the government invests in this area. Well, yeah, it's because every dollar they pledge, now get this, they stand to make three or four dollars, makes sense. And the next biotech boom could be worth hundreds of millions to the government. But it's not just our own government that's investing. Well, that's correct. I mean, Australian biotech or Australia biotech suggests that Australia continues to attract significant investment on, from the US. Yeah, which actually surprised me. But the graphics um, show that in 2022, 24 investment de deals met, were valued at combined $642 million. Now, Ooh. that was um, 2022 be became the record breaking year for investment from US investors in Australian biotech companies, with the total of the US investment into these Australian life science companies totaling more than $1.43 billion US dollars over five years. Holy shit. Now, I also found an article on the Precedence Research website, which is worth a look. Why don't you have a read of it? Okay, now, but the article reads, global biotechnology market was estimated at 1,224 billion US dollars in 2022 and is expected to be worth around 3,210 billion dollars US dollars or billion US dollars by 2030. So hang on to your hats mm -hmm. as the growth, the growth really is set to go into overdrive as this article also suggests that it's poised to grow at a compounded average growth rate of 12.8% from 2023 to 2030. Yep. Or 2030, 30. sorry, mm -hmm. if I read that properly. Now it's, that's huge. So we need to remember this is just biotech. Yeah, and it's I... not. So I do want to offer a word of warning though to that have, you've not had much time looking at this, then biotech companies are often speculative. So it's critical that you make sure that you do your homework and don't, I don't mean just reading a blog post chat forum or getting a broker tip. I mean, really do your own independent research. Oh man, that's excellent advice, Janine. Now I'm sure, I really am sure you're going to have some graphs, <laughs> aren't you? Uh, yep, goes without saying, absolutely. How about we take a look at a graph now then? On your screen right now is a graph of the global biotech data. Don't you just love to see those exponential curves? My mind's boggling, Janine. <laughs> now the graph shows the global biotechnology market from 2021 to 2030 without getting too carried away. This is exciting. Now, just imagine how this curve could grow when the market is focused on growth again and rampant speculation. 
Yeah, you know, that'll eventually return too. Yeah, it's mind-boggling, isn't it? It always happens, doesn't it? Because it's been really quiet, hasn't it? The biotech and pharma haven't been the centrepiece of our stock market for ages because mm. tech dominated Tech it. and Bitcoin before that. Yeah, that's right. Mm. And so now we're going to see this come back to into prominency again. And if the mm. US have got that kind of money behind them, Australian mm. government's pouring money in, you've always got to look at where the government's putting their money as well because that's often an indication of what's going to go. Well, it is too, and you're going to see those same sort of patterns on charts that we saw with Bitcoin over mm. those few years that we've seen on some of the tech stocks over yeah. the last few years. You're just going to see that general curve and all of a sudden, boof, it goes off. Yeah, so the, the, mm. the beauty about it is there are going to be so many stocks to buy and you won't have enough money to put it in. Well, that's a tough <laughs> position to be in too. It's great, isn't it? But then mm. for traders, it can be a bit challenging as well, because, especially new traders when they're learning because all of a sudden they've got this watch list and we're telling them to condense it down to 15 or 20. Their mind's going, oh, there's so many stocks to choose from. Well, and that's then where FOMO's going to come into it really mm. big time because I remember the last biotech boom, you know, people going, you know, the whole the story was, oh, they're about to announce this or the FDA is going to approve this and they're buying in at the peak and all of a sudden mm. when the FDA goes, no, we're not approving that, they tank again, yeah. you know, and I watch one stock do that two or three times Amazing, taking people's it? money right across the board. So it's going to be one of those periods where people have to do their research. Well, I wonder how the AI mm. is going to help all of that as well. It's already having an effect. So it'll be mm -hmm. interesting to see how that accelerates. Like, you know, if we're thinking that AI is where there's so much money going and then the biotech and pharma put them together. It's Good. Mm. That's a recipe for a bull market, <laughs> isn't, isn't it? it? And a rampant one at that. Yeah. And the US has already started to increase its stake in the sector here in Australia. Well, you'd think the US companies would have enough to buy in their own backyard. I mean, they've got a lot of biotechs, haven't they? But clearly that's not the case. So you've got to ask why that's going on. Well, I've got my own theories. What's also interesting is what Goldman Sachs had to say about pharmaceutical companies. Apparently, in the US, pharmaceutical companies have $700 billion for acquisitions and investment. $700 billion. God, well, that's a huge number. Mm. So... What is this implying and should I keep a close eye on this area from market yeah, or should exactly. I keep an eye on this part of the market if you've got that kind of money? That's exactly right. But we want to see that pouring in first. So if there's going to be a market crash, then you know that there's so much more money out there, say on pharmaceuticals, and you're not going to see it necessarily going in there if there's a crash going on. So it's about just having a look at where the market's going and then waiting for that. Let's allow the charts to tell us the rest of the story. Well, I hope so. So we're going to be looking at stocks right now, aren't we? I think we should. Oh, I've been champing at the bit to get at the charts. Uh, is that what that noise was? <laughs> it was something else. Okay. Uh, that's my stomach gurgling yeah. after dinner. <laughs> okay, so healthcare, um, S&P ASX 200 we've got there. So we're doing the sector first? Yes, so we start with a big picture first and see how the sector's unfolding now. Mm. This is basically... Um, the mirror image of what, well, the exact image, I should say, of what the CSL is doing, the big... Well, I was going to say, the healthcare sector is pretty top-heavy, isn't it? Isn't it? There's only a couple of stocks that are there. But it's interesting that it's come back to that line, because just this ugly-looking pattern that we're seeing mm. here makes you think that we could end up seeing healthcare come back down to this level, but yep. not necessarily so, because... It's really just pulling back to the angle of that trend. It does, yep. So look, we just wait and see and be patient and see whether there's enough in there to push CSL back up and that'll push the whole thing or everything will start to move then. So you're saying that CSL will drag up the rest of the sector? I think so. So we're down, mm -hmm. it, it's been down 30%. That's probably the lowest point, which was here around mm -hmm. February 2022 when it fell. But it just looks to me, when I look at that, I just look at it and think, geez, it just looks like it wants to fall down here between 200 and 220, doesn't it? Just, it does. Mm, I mean, that's um, a huge move. You know, mm. Obviously, it's gone up in the last 11 years from around $20 to around $340. Yeah. So it's like, wow. I mean, looking huge. at the way that the phases have unfolded on the downside, it looks like it's done mm. enough to turn around at this point. So, But it'll take a number of months before we know the answer. So that's CSL. Now, I just thought I'd throw in here an ETF. Mm. This is actually BetaShares Global Healthcare, so it combines all the different areas of the healthcare sector. You'd have to look it up on the BetaShares website, but I thought it's really cute how the code is called drug. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. Uh, um, anyway, 
Just so you're talking about it's done obviously biotechs and pharmaceuticals, yeah. but it's also other areas. It could be hospitals and other types of... Oh, well, I haven't looked in detail no? as to what it is. But if you're thinking of invest, I'm not putting money into this one, but if you're thinking of putting money into it, then you would want to make sure you look at what, what, what it's actually what in. What it's actually doing. But I, I thought it was interesting that we're seeing this sort of agreement in price coming towards this um, point. So around that $7.80 mm -hmm. mark. But it still needs to get through all this resistance here. So... Let's just wait and see whether this um, CSL goes through, and then if that's the case, then big ETFs like this should go. Okay. So um, Fisher and Paykel's one. Now, I cheated a little bit here because it's actually not part of the bio sector. So obviously our stock market has dipped. I'm just going to – I don't know if you'll see this, but I just thought I'd just show you anyway. I'll just quickly go well, to... Well, we are seeing it, but you can show yeah, us. In, in here, there's all these subsectors. So, so hospital and nursing so management. So has got health services, it's got hospital, managed health care, medical nursing, services to health industry. They're okay. not the ones that we're and in at health the technology. We're in the health technology area, which is biotech, yeah. medical specialists, specialties, pharmaceuticals, pharmaceuticals generic. major, and, and other. So we're, we're not in medical... So I didn't really want to be in this medical specialties or any of these other ones, but... Um, I that, picked up that, Fisher and Is that and medical marijuana specialties? <laughs> You'll have to wait to another show to see that. Aren't we doing a show on that? Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Um, well, I suppose if people want to, so if they quote below, comment below the video. That would be awesome. That they want us to do a show on medical that. marijuana, we'll do that. There's a lot of people interested in, and when uh, certain mm -hmm. specialty areas like that will take off again, as they did previously, we saw a big mm -hmm. boom in that area at one Okay. Stage. So comment below if you want us to do marijuana stocks. Okay, then Fisher and Paykel Healthcare. It does not exactly fit in with the rest of these mm. ones, but it just had a big name and I liked it. Um, mm. But I, I'm just waiting to see if this is the bottom right now. So okay. it could be a short term low that we're seeing on Fisher and Paykel. So it's probably got a trend line in there somewhere as well. Yep. Um, nice little trend line probably down there. So, and we're just seeing it, it at a really looking nice good, isn't it? level. It is. It does look interesting. So that's Fisher and Paykel now. Um, Talix Pharmaceuticals Limited. That's who's this? I haven't stock. heard of this company before. Talix Pharmaceuticals. Well, look, I mean, I don't know what happened here because I haven't been following mm. it recently. But it's a shame, isn't it? Because it was a really nice little trade there. If you'd mm. been into this one, um, it's just taken. Let's just have a look at how far it's risen. So, some of these. This is a biotech stock, so it's probably mm. risen close to thirty percent there, around twenty-seven, twenty-eight percent. Is this in the in top two hundred? Um, I can't recall now. Just have a look at the... Um, mm -hmm. Well, we can bring see. up that we'll just market go, index I can show if yeah, you like. Yeah, we will. Um, we've got 4.5 million mm. shares there. It's not too bad. And $11. So it's not too bad in terms of size. So if we just want to flick over to uh, market index and we'll just mm. have a look. TLX. And Talix... Um, Healthcare, it says, listed under healthcare. Yeah, 3.67 billion. Dividend yield's not recorded. PE ratio's not recorded. So I just, you can't trust any of those numbers at the moment. It's a global commercial stage biopharmaceutical company focused on the development of diagnostic and therapeutic products using targeted radiation. Oh, okay. Deep pipeline for prostate, kidney, brain, and hemo uh, all different types Hematological of cancers. Hematological cancers and, and, and rare diseases. diseases yeah. Been, okay. So that's what, we're th what this one covers. Well, that's a growth area. It is. So it'll be interesting to see, doing a little bit of research, what happened there. And perhaps if you know um, more about this stock, you might like to share your view on it. And you can always comment on that if you'd like to just tell us a bit about your thoughts on this one. Maybe you've traded it before. But it looks like it's just it's setting up nicely mm. here for another rise. However, if it fell below that low there in September, um, then I would just say stay out of it. It would be a bit risky because it could come back. But um, if it holds up nicely and heads back up at about $12, it could be very interesting. Yeah, but it, its pattern's a little bit different than the CSL and some of the others, isn't it, mm. really? It's, it's, it's a strange-looking pattern. Definitely. Because it's had that huge run-up where you've got that percentages. That's really quick run-up. That's funny, isn't it? Because regardless of what there. happened, mm. we often see that sort of consolidation happen. Mm. Um, it can happen at a high or anywhere along the way. But when you see these sort of, how much was that drawdown? That was about That's 46%. 46%. There. So it's pretty volatile. And the um, it's, it's again, one of those little patterns that's unfolded on the chart. Mm. 
and then broken out. And we've looked at some of the more speculative stocks and talked about those type of patterns before mm. on those as being yeah, a, an indicator of an opportunity to get a big rise. And sometimes the more speculative ones can give you a windfall greater than that. But it's about then getting out of it. It's not staying in it, isn't it? So this mm. would be a stock based on what we talked about just a, a minute ago. Obviously, if the US has got, let's say, S, lo loads. S loads of money, and they're looking for takeovers and, and they'll be taking over smaller companies, mm. this would be something on their list. It would be a good one, but whether they'd be wanting to pay that price for it's the question, isn't it? Well, Given it's sometimes you know, they're looking at that future value. It's mm. like if they've got some really cool research and something else that could they could commercialise mm. really quickly, you'd, you'd, they're going to overpay for it anyway, aren't they, to get it into their system? Well, if the stock plummets and then there's an announcement of a takeover, I'll be thinking very suspiciously about that. Well, okay. So you're saying that sometimes they push the price of the stock down before they go into a takeover announcement. Did I say that? No, she didn't. You didn't say that. I said that. Mm. Um, but I didn't say they were doing it either. But Well, it's up at the moment. So hopefully it just stays up and keeps going. It's a stranger thing. It's a nice happened. stock. If you're in it, obviously you'd st stay with it while it's trading sideways and then just wait for that breakout. Now... There's no such Poly thing Novo. as market manipulation, is there? No. Now, Polynovo is yes. a stock that a lot of people have talked about over they time. Have. It looks like it's going south. I'm it not does. sure if it's finished yet, but if it has, you know, it's a good launching pad for the start of it. It's probably got a trend line in there. Um, maybe? Mm, no, yeah, not, quite. not quite. But it may do once it starts to hover around this bottom here. So um, if it did that, it'd have to trade over a few hurdles. But I actually I would, like this. It looks interesting, but I would never just go after a stock because it's widely talked about, which no. Polynovo is one of those ones. That are it is. We get about. asked about it every now and again, don't we? Yeah. So that looks interesting to have on the watch list as well. And it trends nicely and it just takes off like a rocket. But then how do you get out of it? Look at that. Yeah, you know, I mean, why, why I, is this talked about? Is this a stock? And, I know, and you may not even know the answer, but is this a stock they talk about a lot about on chat forums and things like that? Or uh, look, I know, think it's I, talked I know about in the it media? It gets talked about in the media. Mm. A lot. In the media, you know, so you often see articles and things where it's included in it as part of the biotech. It hmm. might just be its size that's important as well. well so possibly. It, it's interesting. It's an interesting one to watch anyway going forward. Now, um, Neuron Pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. NEU, took off like a rocket. Look at that. Holy moly. That's just amazing, isn't it? So a little consolidation there kicked it off. It Quite was probably a liquid the safe back a couple of years start. ago, but looking good now. Yeah, and I guess what's interesting to me is just to have a look at how far it rose on this break up. So that was 28%. Mm. Now, normally if you and I were looking at that, we would say, oh, you know, you wouldn't be buying it if it was a, it had yes. just gone up 28%. It's more likely to come back. But some of these smaller stocks, you, you can't think that way necessarily all the time because it's just proving it. So you've really got to look at the history to tell you what it's more likely to do and then assess the risk that way. But at the moment, it's pulled back. Probably more likely to come back a bit further. We think it's going to cover that gap, wouldn't you? You would Between think so. Between 8 and $9. Yeah. And look, um, if we sort of draw a line up here somewhere, we can see that it's probably got a little bit of room to come back. But I just like the fact that you can draw a trend line on the monthly on this yeah. farmer stock, which is obviously quite volatile. Um, that impressed me, the fact that I could get that on there. But it seems like it's doing, instead of, mm. like sometimes when you see that sort of vertical like we saw here, this huge vertical, you see a big move down, but it's been a quite an orderly move down, which is nice. So it's obviously overheated from where it was. It's, you know, 15, 15 Look, there. Look, if that came back and filled that gap and then found yeah. support and turned around there, and you've got a trend line entry and a few other things happening, yeah. I yeah. think that'd be really interesting. Because you think it was down 32%, they're currently down 27, and to get down to there, it's, it's about 46%. Mm. So that's if, if you're seeing a stock that's done that, coming back close yep. to 50%, it's not unusual. Look, some of these sort of stocks are mm. obviously going to be sought after and seen as sexy because of the be. volatility, but they're also dangerous for Can a lot be. of people. Mm. Can be dangerous. Yeah. So that's where it's really important to have a good set of rules on any of these sort of stocks and, and manage them tightly. So that's um, new neuron pharmaceuticals that we've just covered. Mm. Now... Um, Botanix Pharmaceuticals, I don't know if I've said that correctly. I think it's Botanix, I'm Botanics. not sure. Is that a backdoor listing? It looks like it has been, It does look it? like a backdoor listing, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks odd. So I don't know what's happened there, but you'd have to go and do a bit of research. It's starting to look a bit more promising than it has for a long time. 
but it's still got a long way to go. So I just think this is really too speculative at this point, but it really depends on you. So looking at the volume here, it's 14 million and we're talking about 18, 17 cents or 16 cents or something. So I, I would have, if you'd said me the name, I botanics. would have thought that would be I've more of a. Of I thought it would be more of a biotech than a farmer, because mm. botanics seems to conjure up, you know, botanicals, doesn't it? Not necessarily chemicals. Well, sometimes these farmer stocks, and um, they do the biotech as well. They so do you the just biotech have to as do well. Your research, yeah. So it might do both of those as well. But again, but it may got... not be the dominant, mm. you know, area for them. So. But it's it's obviously it's quite volatile. There's a lot more volume coming in since you know earlier this year. A lot of that volume's come in through there. And it's on the cheaper end. I mean, you can see there it's been up at 21 cents, so it's really fallen quite heavily. And it's, it's done what the other stock, remember we talked about 50%? Look at that, it's yeah. pretty close. Mm. So you never know, it may have finished its run away. And I think from a short term perspective, and but somebody who's. What was the sell off more, for? I'd have to, I'd be, have to I'd look need it to look up at that, find yeah. out. Mm. But you'd think it could be just finding some support somewhere around where it is now. Yeah, there's another one of those nice little consolidations there and it's mm -hmm. pushed up from that, so telltale sign. How, just out of interest, mm -hmm. I just want to see how far it rose, just so from the close of that, it was over 100%. So, but then it's, you've always got to be on the super alert. How would you have got out of it? You just couldn't because it just That's dropped. correct. You've had to be really mm. tight stock. And this is what a lot of people don't understand with these types of stocks because some of them would have been buying in in the last few weeks because it's cheap. Yep. from where it was, it's nearly half price. They went, wow, I'll get in, I'll get mm. it cheap, I'll get twice as many shares. But there's nothing saying that they stopped falling, firstly. Yeah, so, so say so they did that, mm. like just, just count a scenario here. Mm. So for example, somebody got in at this point and it was only, what, 12 cents. Mm. They'd have to set the stop loss underneath the bottom of that bar. And you have to. Keep it super tight. Mm. Um, if it takes off, great. But they'd be, be pretty happy with themselves at the moment with the price that they well, that it's that? at. But then do they actually get out and... You know, that's only 16. But it's also a guess, mm. and that's the challenge. That's what, exactly what you were saying at the early start is you need to do your research and really understand it because you've got to have rules oh, yeah. around this. It's just because you can buy into a stock or you're excited to buy into it mm. doesn't mean you're going to be able to collect the profits. Yeah, exactly. And which means getting out of it because until you get out of it, you've got nothing. Mm. And that's a well, lot see, of people don't this, realize. This is more, it's a gamble, this sort of stock, more so than mm. any other stock because it just doesn't have that liquidity supporting it. So, yet. how would you suggest somebody who wanted to invest in this? What would you just what would you suggest they do? Um, if they want to invest in this, I'd say, depending on your experience, if you haven't got a lot of experience, I'd say look elsewhere. Just don't mm. even trade these type of shares. Okay, so what if they've got a bit more experience? That's really tough and mean, isn't it? It is. It is, but then a lot of people... That's tough, love. Well, it is, but and I understand that because, I mean, there's an old saying, you know, what a, what the, what, what a wise man learns from a, from a fool's question is more than the fool learns from the answer. Mm. And often we give advice to people, but they don't take it. Mm. And how often do we see somebody get into a stock like this? And I know, Janine, you said I shouldn't be buying this sort of stock, but I did and. Yep. And the and is normally I've lost this much money. But that's then, okay, because I mean, what people end up doing is they're focusing on what they've lost, not what they've learned, which is this really yeah. sad thing, because it just mm. means that that lesson needed to hurt before you learned it, that's all. Oh, that's never a true word said, I don't mm. think. Never oh, a true word said. I thought so. you were going to say wise, but he didn't. Wise, true, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> well, that is it for our topic for tonight. And those, um, thank you very much for watching on our topic at the moment, but we are needing to move on. Now, if you have been listening, if you have been listening to us and you do want to give us a call, make sure you pick up the phone and call 9290-9988 now. We do want to take your calls. As we said a little bit earlier, we don't have too many emails. So please pick up the phone, 92909988. That's 03. But while we wait for you to call, we're going to have an email, don't we? Um, look, we are going to the what the? Oh, we're going to go, hey. Can we jump straight in, can we? Hey, no, before you do. <laughs> you know, I was actually chatting to somebody the other day, a young mm. guy, and he goes, he said to me, Dale. He said, I said, what? He goes, um, how much does it cost? to get married and I said mate I don't know I'm still paying for mine <laughs> <laughs> it's an ongoing ching ching that's a what that <laughs> uh, okay so you got a maybe, what that maybe we could mm -hmm. have that advice on talking wealth that's could that could be a good topic for talking wealth for one of the experts what, how to get it? married <laughs> how to get married and not have to pay forever <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so, so what's your what that well okay 
we go to the what though. Now, where am I? I'm totally lost here. Um, okay. If you're lost, I'm definitely lost. Yeah, you've just thrown me with that joke. He didn't tell me he was going to spring that. He did tell me it was going to be a joke, but he didn't tell me what it was. <laughs> so that's, okay. Um, you're up. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> it's your what, then, not mine. No. So, so we're going to talk about the, the so the what there is a regional and Australian banks. Now, it's just my Macquarie Don't Bank punchline, saying yeah. it's going to be cashless. Well, look in the um, regional areas. It, it, look, like my yeah. stomach, my stomach was rumbling from last week, and I was yeah. trying to find a really juicy topic for this week because last week, as you know, yeah. was all about the donuts, and I was just disappointed with myself that I didn't have two sitting there because I really felt like them at the time. But well, you like you, anyway, you would have eaten both of them anyway. This week's one is all about, as you said, Macquarie Bank. Yeah, um, and it's all about. The concern yeah. in, reg in the regional areas about them losing their ability to use cash. So there's, there's concern everywhere at the moment that we could end up going to a cashless, become a cashless society. That's where we think that that's what the banks are wanting to do. But do they really at this point? Of course they do. At this point, though. Yeah, Not they tomorrow. do. Because having cash costs them money, mm. so they want to get rid of that. And they, you know, most eighty percent of transactions now are, are cashless. Well, what's but the spread the of our population, is, and how do the, you know, sixty pluses feel about that? Well, it's not about the sixty pluses. It's about how losing control, in my mind, because Macquarie's never had a branch. They don't have branches. Mm -hmm. I've been a Macquarie, Macquarie client for a couple of decades, so Macquarie's never been into giving people cash. You had to do something else to get cash out of your mm. Macquarie bank accounts. But the banks want to get rid of cash because it's cheaper so and Macquarie easier. So Macquarie wants to get rid of cash transactions, checks. Yeah, they, yeah, they've already got rid of checks. Everybody's mm. got rid of checks, but it's like no ATMs. Mm -hmm. All of that sort of stuff. And so that, must be that, would, that would be a super sad day handsome. because when we don't have cash around in the society, then the banks can charge whatever they like for mm. all sorts of stuff. Whereas right now, and, and the government's going to track it and people are worried about that, you know, and so what about your Sunday markets, all that sort of stuff? It'll be tapping little There'll machines. Be some barter system. Or but point. people will come up with another pay payment of cash. But I think sure. more people Bitcoins should be They'll drawing be doing cash Bitcoins out. around the market. <laughs> well, that's why Bitcoin, you know, went pretty wild because people are thinking, "Wow, we've got a different system." How about system. gold nuggets? They might, you know, you have out the you gold. have a lot of nuggets. <laughs> I tell you what, but you know, you do. But you have a lot of gems and gold nuggets. So under the mm. heading, what did mm. it say? One of Australia's major banks this week announced mm. a plan to phase out cash transactions. Yeah. Now they can't do that, or can they? That's really the question, is it? Can well, that's they? true. They can absolutely. They can. I'm sure they can, because mm. again. Most transactions now are cashless. But I think they'd have to wait for a third of the population to die before they can do that. That's my I opinion. would be, and personally, I would be paying for a shed load of stuff with cash, but my wife smacks me on the back of the head all the time, and she said, I can't track your spending <laughs> while you're paying cash. So there's not just the so, bank. Yep, so a lot of husbands are probably thinking the same thing. I want to, you want, like you, you want to have your pie and chips at the footy. Well, you know. Yeah, no, no, sushi. <laughs> you, you're going to, it's going to show up on the credit card. I know. <laughs> I know it's going to show up. I bought a pie and chips. I didn't buy sushi. Yeah. So, so where have I got cash? He doesn't know. Mm. And I think, you know, to me, that's fair. I mean, well, it's not fair. So what does it mean to the mm. bank's bottom lines? If they can get rid of all of the ATMs, more money, no more cash, you know, it's going to. Because if they're not fun, they don't mm. have to fund, have the ATM machines. They don't have to have the branches. I mean, try and... But why don't they just get rid of the over-the-counter stuff first? They already well, that's have. That's what they're trying to do. No, there's still people that go in there to the branch. But you go and try and take it, walk into the bank on any day and mm. ask them for $5,000. Oh, no, I've seen them shepherding the little old ladies to the ATMs. Yeah, but try and go and ask them to get $5,000 of cash out of the bank. Mm. They'll go, um, sorry, you have to tell us three days in advance for you to get the cash. Mm -hmm. You can't just walk in and get 5000 Well, we all know the banks don't have that money. If everyone Correct. went to get their And then money, when you go and it. ask them for the $5,000 in cash and they've got it there, then they ask you what you're spending it on. Mm. And I would go... That's disgusting. I, w I would be sticking my finger up and going, oh. none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm spending right. it on drugs and wine and women or something. Okay, I don't know. so it's a bit of a pipe dream at the moment to have Correct. a cashless society. We yes. know that. However, banks are always looking for ways to save money. Mm -hmm. So... You know, if they're but regional Victoria, regional um, areas of Australia are going to be really stressed about it because there's a lot mm. of cash that changes hands Correct. in regional areas. Mm. Yeah, well, there's a lot of cash in those sorts of areas because I mean, it's, it could be 100 kilometres to the nearest ATM. Mm. 
Yeah. So they'd be working a lot more on cash and stuff mm. like that. So I just think it's a, I just think it's a sad day that banks can do that and, and not necessarily be there. Because to me, we need to be, mm. regional Australians need to be supported. Oh, exactly. Farmers need to be supported. Well, you've this. always banged on about that banks are supposed to be there to provide a service. What well, to is, me, they're essential what service. What is the need? In the, and currently, while you've got elderly people, you need to look after them. Yeah, you but it's, to banks, it's about their bottom line, how they make billions Can you of remember, dollars. All, imagine all the grannies running around with a watch and they're doing all their penny transactions from their watch. Yeah, they call them smart watches, but they can be pretty dumb sometimes, <laughs> can't they? So but you can imagine, in like little rings and tip and things. And, mm, we yeah. can laugh, but it's coming. It is. Mm. All right, well, we do need to get into an email, Janine, but before we do, we if won't. you do want to give us a call, make sure you pick up the phone. 92909988 or you can text in your question to the show um, on the number on your screen but do you want to read can out I the next say, thing? Well can I just say also yeah. comment on our show like below the show after mm. the show's finished because we want to hear what your thoughts are on the banks on, yes. on the banks it's really important that you have your say do you like the bank and mm. do you want to keep cash in the society mm, very good yeah? and if you don't why don't all right then now you do We've got an email. We do have an email. Now it's time to get into a question from James. Now, hey Dale and Janine, do you think that the issues with the CEO of LaVisa, ASX code LOV, I love, love, and his remuneration is causing the share price to drop? Now, if so, why and how does it get resolved? This is a great question. Did you think the price would drop? Well, how far do you think it could continue to do so? Cheers, James. Great question, James. Thank you so much for texting or for sending that in, emailing in. Well, on the, I mean, look, the chart doesn't look... I don't think the, the CEO's salary's got anything to do with it falling well, look, look over. Look at the price but drop here. That was back in May. Mm. Um, and then it's be... fallen again here in September. So... It's but is that because down... of this, what the CEO gets paid? I don't think it would be. I think it's really because of whether that they're doing a good job or what they're doing. Oh, I haven't looked at the announcements and that on that stock, mm. but I'd need to do that first, look at their announcements and go, well, what is happening there? But I don't think I've ever seen a CEO's pay being the cause of a stock to fall away. Well, look, usually it's because, usually that's the smoke screen mm. that the media put out, and behind that there would have been the story about some issue with the forecast or they didn't meet what analysts were expecting. You've mm -hmm. just got to read between the lines. Or, yeah, they, they don't like the CEO. Mm. Maybe, and they're causing... Well, that's what, this, that's what this James yeah. is suggesting, that maybe he shouldn't have been remunerated the way that he was, and maybe they... they yeah, maybe don't they don't like, like that, because obviously the big end of town are looking at this saying, OK, well, you know, they want to get, drive some money from the stock, basically, so quite often they're getting into the board's mm. ears, obviously the big shareholders and stuff like that, but okay, right now... So what's the potential downside? Well, I think there's more potential downside on this stock. I mean, obviously you've got a high there at 26.85, that one at 27.11, and this one at 27.21. So you've got three highs between November last year and April this year, all at the same price, then this big bar down through here, um, in May, where it's a six dollar sixty one range mm. on a twenty six dollar stock, that's huge. That is huge. As soon as it we're took talking, out those lows, it was yeah, all over, wasn't it? We're talking about look at the mat. There's twenty three percent on one month that fell over. Now mm. this is, and, and again, I'd need to look at the announcements and everything else to find what it. What was exactly. the pullback prior to that in twenty twenty one to twenty twenty two? Yeah, what, was, what percentage fall have we got there? From that one, from there down yep. to there, there's forty six percent. So so where is forty six percent from the high up here? Up here, oh, go okay, from the all can... time high. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm just playing. That is totally oh, you want not me to what do... you meant to oh, do. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're asking me to be serious now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's forty six percent roughly okay. down around there. So that's where it could come back to then. And at the moment it looks like it because you've got this big mm. massive resistance through its nice little zigzag. And I was only talking about this um, yesterday on my market report with all the talking wealth people, saying, you know, we've had that really, really nice mm. clean now the clean zigzag on our all orders, all orders index. But you've got to look at this is this week, so it's only two days, yesterday okay. and today. It's down. It's a dollar twenty-seven range. It's down to. Could eight. it find support there? Well, possible. Eighteen twelve. There's low there. There's seventeen eighty-eight. Not too far away, but it's holding up. But if it look, if it drops below that low, it's definitely coming down to here. Mm, yep. You know, in my book, I mean, when you're looking at it, it's definitely hitting fourteen dollars. You know, and to me, this is what people have to worry about. I'm not saying it's definitely going to be on fourteen dollars, but it would need to find some. 
um, it'd need to find some support uh, above that low through there and start to move up before I'd get excited about it. But I think at this point in time, given how far it's fallen and its shape, I've got I'd some say news we then. need to expect more falls. I've got some news. Have you? Something to get you excited. Just Guess being what? here we've gets got, me excited. We've got Hazel on the line. We've got Hazel on yes, the line. Yes, we do. Hazel, how are you this evening? Oh, I'm well. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you. And mm. thank you so much for calling into the show. We're looking forward to having a chat with you. And what have you been up to and what stocks are you looking at at the moment? Well, I'm looking at Paladin. I actually um, took a position on Paladin on the 9th of August for 80 cents. And it, it went up. If you notice, it, hit, it went up to about 115 cents. And way back, it looked like there was some resistance about 115, 117 cents. Mm. And I was worried about it coming back. And it has come back. Um, you, you're looking to trade medium, long term, or is it well, short term? I bought it for medium, long term. Mm -hmm. But I've noticed that it's actually come back one month down. And two on the monthly, and two weeks down on the weekly. Right. And so I'm getting a bit nervous. It's getting towards that one dollar mark, one dollar mm -hmm. three, I think it is now. And I've made about twenty three percent profit. So I'm wondering about my rule. You know, do I get out now, or do I have faith in the fact that it's in the uh, uranium market? Mm. It doesn't appear. If I draw a line up, which doesn't really look like a trend line. Um, it looks like it could be just coming back to that line. It could do. And that's the thing, to get the trend line in place, that's often what has to happen. It doesn't mean the stock will fall away completely below the line either. It could just come back and find support and then take off again. But, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, you've got to have a stop loss, a trailing stop loss, as Dale talks about in his book, to protect your position when you're in it. So I've got a trailing stop loss at 98 cents. I've been putting it up as the stock goes up. And how are you determining that? Well, I've been going down 15% where, it, where it's been at. Oh, from its high? Yes. So 15% from the peak and then, yeah. Um, and as it goes up, I've put it up. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, that's a, a rule of thumb that's sort of a really rude rule of thumb in terms of trying to find a rule when you don't have a rule. Um, <laughs> you know, that's the challenge. But it's really about how much you're willing to lose if you if you have a set of rules like if you know how to use trend lines that's one thing if you know how to use other rules that's great but if you don't have those you've got to have something which you do which is fantastic so um, I'm not concerned about it personally that's just mm. my view I actually really like the mm. stock I mean Hazel's done really really good because you've had this massive big this real this pattern mm. again and it's broken up and we've had one two three four months straight up so Seeing those four months straight up, and we're talking about 122 percent, you've got to. I would have put money on it. It's going to have at least one month down, maybe yeah. two months so down. So, how far is it going to pull back? That's the question. I don't think it's going to pull back too far. I mean, obviously, Hazel's got that. If we just expand that up, she's got a 15 percent stop loss, which she said 98 cents. And I don't have a problem with that if you're not using All talk technical about rules. Uranium's been positive mm. from not from you know my point of view, but mm. from the point of view of the fact that it looks like the prices are at a level mm. where it's become more profitable mm. for um, the uranium miners to actually sell uranium. So if that's the case and mm. there's more money that's going to be invested, then she might be right. It may continue to go up. Mm. But what what about the the, you know, with a stock like this, what about the theory of a bird in the hands worth two in the bush? You know, it's like well, you can do that. Again, it's, as I said, unless you're using technical rules and mm. you've got your, you know, you tried and tested trading plan, you've back tested it, you know, you would use for this 15% stop loss. It's not a bad rule mm. on, a, or on a major high and what she's got there. So I don't have a problem with if she exited it because if it found some support around here and started to move back up again, she can just get back into it. Mm. Yeah, because brokerage is pretty much two fifths of nothing just nowadays. Can um, Just to yeah. go to the daily for a minute. I just and want she's to made see good money, so it's about it. protecting your money. So there's a little gap down there. It doesn't mean it will fill it, but it's coming back to fill that one there. There's probably a little one there. So it could come back to, I guess you'd have to look at what the scenario is. It could come back to um, sort of in this order. And 20% would be, a, for this sort of stock, mm. would be normal, wouldn't yeah. it? I would, as I said, I would expect it to fall away anyway for at least one month, mm. if not two. It's only been down the last two weeks. It hasn't been fallen for the month. 
So, yeah. and to me, that's nothing major, but I think I like it, Hazel. I like the stock, yeah, so medium term. Just, if you're comfortable with the stop loss, stay with it. Mm. Mm. Okay, fantastic. Well, we've got a text, and this one's from Philip. Now, Philip's asked about Origin. Thoughts on the acquisition, Brookfield and Mid-Ocean. What do you think? Um, we've got Origin in there. What do I think? I'm really um, quite frustrated about this stock. Oh, I, got, I actually did podcasts on mm. this one. Um, tried to be become put my activist hat on. You're being reserved right now. Normally you'd be fuming at the Well, look, there's no fire point. There's no point in getting upset about something that's already been approved. Um, I know, but is it for the? It's why is it being approved, and is it for the benefit of Australia? I don't think so. Why? Well, look, the theory is it's all about competition and creating competition. We already had competition. Competition in our marketplace, mm -hmm. so. How is this really going to help? Um, that's what I'm not clear on. Obviously, the ACCC are experts at it. They know what they're doing. But for me, I just think it's wrong to take these sort of types. These types of stocks should not be coming off our market. Fine. Energy, material, some of the big material stocks, we should be maintaining them. I totally agree with you, but I mean, you know. Had, they've had... got the royalties. They've got the licenses. Yes, the taxpayers have put money into these stocks in the beginning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here I so, go. <laughs> no, no, I'm, 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 look, I'm with you because, you, I mean, you said, you know, the ACCC knows what they're doing, but really do they? Mm -hmm. And who's actually influencing that decision? Well, is it it's, government it's or policy. industry? Well, their policy. They've got, to, they've got to abide by their policy. And so mm -hmm. what happens is every time a company tries to take another company over and it's got to go through the ACCC, the ACCC is stuck between a rock and a hard place because mm. the, the body, the, the vested interests in the industry put letters out to them saying, this is what you've said, so this is what you have to do, basically, right? Mm. So the, that's what they've got to do. And it's just wrong the way that the policy's written and not balanced off against other things. In so life. what you're suggesting is we should do what? Well, there's nothing we can do at this point because... It, it's basically a done deal, but I just wouldn't have approved it if I had any say in it. <laughs> no, but that's where I think we need to well, really stamp our feet and, and tell our politicians this mm. is not acceptable anymore. Because mm. we, you know, if we've got companies like this that do have rights to the minerals and resources of Australia, um, well, that the they shouldn't energy, be sold the off to foreign countries. And stuff that's going on at the moment. So mm. you know, that's what I'm. Oh, look, I'm with you. I just think you know, there's. Too much focus on on the big end of town making shed mm. loads of money and not looking after Australians. Now, have we answered the question properly? I don't know. Have we? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? We're <laughs> asking about what we thought about the takeover, and I think we've said it. Yeah, well, I just. Well, how about we ask everybody else to tell us what they think? So down below, below our video, tell us what you think. Yeah, exactly. You know, tell us what you think about companies like companies of ours come, being taken over by international companies, especially, maybe being delisted, taking over yeah, our resources. Especially when you look at it from a technical point of view. And from mm. a technical point of view, we'd been analysing this for a long time. All Correct. The, we had reports, the assessors were doing it for the students as well. Mm. And we, everybody was of the similar sort of view about where this stock could end up. Mm. So, so you're saying it being too cheap? Too cheap, yeah, and sold off the future benefit to existing shareholders well, too Especially soon. when we've put, well, not we, but the government's helped them to get where they're going with all the support and everything mm. else. And yet we then, so you're basically saying... When, well, all I'm saying is let's just forget about it because there's no point wasting energy on it right now. No, well, that's um, what I'm saying. It's we about be, looking at We should be letting our politicians know that it's not acceptable. We should be, yeah. Mm. Well, that's all we've got on Origin um, before I blow my stack. Now, we hope you've enjoyed our show on YouTube. Show your support for us by commenting below this video because we'd love to hear your favourite part of the show. Also, give us a big thumbs up. It really helps new people to discover these videos and make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you know when we go live. Now, for those watching via Talking Wealth, we can stay tuned for the bonus content we promised. In next week's show, we get into medicinal marijuana stocks and give you our top ASX pot stocks to buy. We'll also answer your questions and so much more. So make sure you put next Tuesday night show on your calendar. Also give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.